Welcome back to everyone here in Washington, D.C. We're going to continue with the second half of the press conference, and this is the huge, big part of the press conference for what is going to take place on Saturday, January 7th, on Showtime Pay-Per-View, right here in the nation's capital at the Capital One Arena. It's the main event. It's the gentleman here to my right, Gervonta Tank Davis, 27 fights, 25 knockouts. That is a knockout percentage of 92%. He's going to be here right down the road from where he grew up at the Capital One Arena. You can obviously check it out on Showtime Pay-Per-View. You can pick up tickets at Ticketmaster.com, CapitalOneArena.com. He will be opposing someone who is, is not a tune-up. He's going to be opposing someone who has been reputable here over the past year, surprising everyone in the sport of boxing to be in this position. Hector Luis Garcia going to be moving up to take on the champ for the WBA Lightweight Championship. Saturday, January 7th on Showtime Pay-Per-View. I want to bring up the president of Showtime Boxing here, Steven Espinoza, to come through and make some words. Thank you, JR. It's been an exciting year here in 2022 for Showtime Boxing. We saw Jamel Charlo become the first undisputed champion at 154. We saw Errol Spence collect another belt. We saw Gervonta in a, another highlight reel knockout in front of a record-setting crowd at Barclays Center. We've got another unified champion in Stephen Fulton. We saw breakout performances from Sebastian Fundora and Tim Zhu. And we'll end the year with a really intriguing matchup on December 17th uh, of two rising young stars, Michelle Rivera and Frank Martin, and that's on Showtime December 17th. But as strong a year as 22 was, I think 2023 will be bigger and better. And there's no bigger way, there's no better way to kick off 2023 than with Gervonta Davis, the hottest young star in the sport. Now, there's a lot of talent in the lightweight division. Many talented fighters, some of the most skilled fighters in the sport. But there's one fighter in the lightweight division that stands out above all others, and that's Gervonta Tank Davis. Simply put, Tank draws fans and does business like few other fighters in the sport. In his last few fights, he sold out arenas in Baltimore, Atlanta, Los Angeles and New York City. And I'm sure we'll be adding Washington DC to that list very, very shortly. There is no other fighter in the sport, no other fighter doing what Tank has done. There's no other fighter selling out arenas literally coast to coast across the US. The biggest boxing gate ever at Barclays Center, one of the top four gates of all time for events of any kind. There's no other fighter doing that. Over his last six fights, Tank has averaged over 15,000 fans per event. That puts him in a category with probably two other fighters, you know, Errol Spence and Canelo. Those are the only fighters who are doing that here in the US. Tank's knocked out 17 of his last 18 opponents. Three of his last five fights have been one punch knockout endings. A champion in three different weight classes, headlining his fifth pay per view. There's no one else in the division doing what Tank's doing. Simply put, he stands apart from every other fighter in his division, and he's among the top two or three in the sport. With apologies to Ricky Hatton, there's only one Tank Davis. This will be his 13th appearance on Showtime, and we are proud to have been part of his journey. Whether you're a hardcore boxing fan or you're new to the sport, Tank is the one fighter who I believe is must-see TV. Now, while Hector Luis Garcia hasn't been on Showtime 13 times, there are few fighters who have made such a big impact in such a short amount of time. As a last minute replacement, Garcia was a 10 to one underdog against highly touted Chris Colbert. Some people had Colbert as a 40 to one favorite. But Garcia pulled off a huge upset, a dominating performance. He followed that up with another dominating performance, winning the world title. And with those two performances, few fighters in the sport have had as strong a year as Hector Luis Garcia. 
and he deservedly is in the conversation for 2022 Fighter of the Year. He's big, he's tough, he's got a strong amateur background, and he has demonstrated power, and above all, he's not intimidated by anyone, no matter what the odds may be. To be honest, with a big matchup for Tank being talked about for later this year, most fighters would have taken an easier fight. One who hasn't been on such a roll, pulling off big upsets. But that's not who Tank is. No tune-up fights for Tank. He's looking for the biggest fights, the biggest challenges. And because of that, we're kicking 2023 off with a bang. Now, one of the hallmarks of Showtime Boxing is the strength of our cards. Top to bottom, meaningful, competitive, high-quality fights. January 7th is no exception. A card stacked with good names, top names, and meaningful fights. In the co-future, we have Jerron Boots Ennis, one of the most talented fighters in the sport. He'll be fighting a title eliminator as he pushes for a world title. At 29 0, 27 knockouts, he's also must see TV. With Tank and Boots on the card, we have two of the top young fighters, most exciting young fighters in the sport. But there's more also on the card. Riding, rising consider, rising contender Rashidi Ellis, 24 0, 15 KOs takes on probably his toughest fight to date in Roymond Villa at 25 and one with 24 knockouts. And Demetrius Andre making his debut at 168 pounds taking on DMV's own Demond Nicholson. It's a can't miss card stacked with good names, top to bottom, meaningful matchups, high quality fights from the start of the pay-per-view telecast all the way through the end. Tank, Boots, Rashidi Ellis, Demetrius Andre, all on one card, holiday present to boxing fans. This is the late Christmas present. My opinion, it's as strong as any pay-per-view card that I've seen in recent past. Of course, we'll be supporting the pay-per-view with an avalanche of wall-to-wall -wall content, coverage on Showtime, on Showtime social media and YouTube, including the Emmy Award winning All Access which will take you inside the lives of these two fighters, Tank and Hector, premiering December 30th. We're thrilled to be here in DC. I know DC's a great fight town. I know the entire DMV is gonna be supporting this event. I know Philly will be supporting this event. The Dominican fans will certainly be supporting this event. It'll be a big, big night, the biggest since Mike Tyson fought here over 15 years ago, and you guys cannot miss it. We'll see you January 7th. Thank you, Stephen. With that being said, we want to start things off by asking trainer Bob Santos, typically more so in the background, an opportunity to be trainer of the year, if you'd make some opening comments. Well, first off, we want to thank Stephen Espinoza, Al Heyman, Louis DeCubis Jr and uh, Gervonta for this opportunity. Um, we're really thrilled to go against, uh, to me, pound for pound, one of the best fighters in the world, and so we're excited about the opportunity. Okay, awesome. Well, now we wanna, I wanna invite you, Hector, to come on up to the podium. Felix Figueroa is here. You can swing on up. Okay. Primero, quiero darle gracias a Dios por todo. Gracias a la compañía PBC, Chontai Boxing TV, Aijemo, de Cuba Junior, por las oportunidades. Eh, siento extremadamente muy orgulloso por las oportunidades. Eh, estar aquí me ha costado mucho llegar. Por eso, por la misma razón, le seguiré demostrando al mundo y a toda mi República Dominicana y al campeón Chelbonta Davis el por qué estoy aquí. Gracias a mi equipo de trabajo por el gran trabajo que estamos haciendo. E incansable para estar en óptimas condiciones el próximo 7 de enero de 2023. 
Well, first of all, I would like to thank God for uh, having uh, given me this huge talent for boxing. I would also like to uh, thank uh, Showtime, everybody. I would, also, uh, I'm, I would like to say also that I'm very happy, very happy to be here. I have worked extremely hard to make it here. I am sure I am going to put up a good show for the world, for the boxing fans, uh, for the Dominican Republic, and that, that's what I've been doing lately. I would also like to uh, thank Gervonta uh, and my team because they, uh, I mean, all my team has gotten me ready to be here and to be ready for the January the 7th fight. Well, Calvin, nothing new here, been here, back in D.C., right down the road. What makes this fight different? Why take this fight? It's important to us. We're trying to take the hardest fight that everybody say we don't take. And um, Hector, he's coming to fight. He had two impressive wins already. He's a world champion. You know, to me, to do a lot of talking, taking easy fights. We never took a fight that we was not told what we had to take. We take any fight that they give to us. This is the fight that we asked for. I always tell youngin, the road to success is through D.C. When we was young, we had D.C. You know what type of party we're going to put down. Um, can't sleep on him. He's coming ready. His um, manager, coach, Santos, we already went through him once. And we got another task again. It's going to be a great night that night. Everybody should pay for this fight, see this fight. It's on. Because my little young got a lot on his mind. He going to make y'all remember him. We don't do no talking. We going to show y'all. So come the 7th, be ready. Because y'all going to get an event that night. All right, thank you, Calvin. Champ, back home. I'm going to slide out the way and let you say some words here. I ain't really trying to get up there. Go ahead. Rock and roll. Uh -huh. I just want to say appreciate everybody for coming out. Um, another event, man, that we got to get to. You know what I mean? So I've been working hard. Uh, I definitely appreciate the uh, the uh, everybody that you know what I mean came out and today and uh, the undercard is stacked. I ain't gonna lie, it make me feel like I'm like I ain't even know that it was so many boxers that was going to be on the card. So it's a surprise to me, you know what I mean? So I feel like I'm back in the amateur. So um, I definitely want to call out Boots for sure, one of the young lines that's coming up uh, for sure. Yes, sir. Uh, Boo Boo, you know what I mean? One of the, another lion. Uh, what's your name, bro? Rashid. Rashid, for sure. You on the card too? Yeah. Facts. So it's, it's definitely a lit night. <laughs> Definitely a lit night for boxing. Uh, we, we got Damon. We got Damon on that mail. Uh, the, the, I ain't gonna lie. I coming back to uh, DC it was like, you know what I mean. I, I had to, you know, what I mean? make sure my guys and you know what I mean people that paid the way for me was on the card. So I had to, you know, put that word in for, you know what I mean, and. <clears throat> and and uh, Lamont Peterson, you know what I mean? They definitely on the call for sure, so definitely uh, give them the opportunity to show out, so definitely appreciate y'all for, you know what I mean? Jaleel, you on the card? Yeah. For sure, so little young Jaleel on the card, so we coming back home to Boogie, baby, you know what I mean? So I appreciate everybody for coming out. Uh, once again, we're going to go back into training camp. We're not sleeping on this guy. I know we got two fights lined up, but that's the main one that we focus on because, you know what I mean, it's, a, it's been a lot of talks in the boxing world, and I, I ain't really trying to do no more talk. I'm ready to, you know what I mean, go through everybody, you know what I mean, that's in my way, so, or in that division, that 135 division, so. But, you know what I mean, this guy says the first person that we got to focus on, so we got to get through him first, so. Again, I appreciate y'all for coming out. See y'all January the 7th. Well, Hector, this question is, is for you. When, when you hear everything that people say about what the past year has looked like for you, 
this opportunity? Do you feel, still feel that you're being overlooked in this situation? No, no, eso, eso no me preocupa para nada, porque yo soy el peleador y soy el que subo allá arriba y sé lo que tengo que hacer. Eh, basta con yo eh, prepararme al, al 200% para estar ready para el día de mi pelea. No, I'm not worried at all by, by all by the things that people say. I know who I am, I know what to do, and I'm the one who does the fighting. I know that I have my, my preparation has been good enough and I am ready to give 200%. Okay. Calvin, knowing that you have two fights that are set up already, and you think about... We got one fight. That's Hector. Don't want to talk about that, period. Don't even ask me a question. So people out there, please don't ask me a question. Hector is on my mind. He's been on my mind two, next, two, two months before we even knew we had him. You know what I'm saying? Um, he's bringing a lot to the table. Everybody's starting to really look at him now. They know he's the real deal. But like I said, the road to success is through D.C. We are in D.C. Hector's standing in front of us. So we know what we got to do. I feel sorry because we have so much pain. You get what I'm saying? And we need to release it before we go to that next level. And Hector is in the way. Simple as that. Okay. Bob, your thoughts? in regards to training for this fight coming up? What has been different, especially moving up in weight? We haven't done anything different uh, that we've done in the past. Um, that said, you know, uh, again, everybody really should tune into this fight. Um, it's gonna be an all-time classic. Um, again, we, like I said, Gervonta, pound for pound, to me is one of the best fighters in the world. At this point in time, he's the best 135 pounder in the world, in my opinion. I've been in this sport for a long, long time. I've been around a lot, a lot of champions. And this fight kind of reminds me, I worked with uh, Joel Casimore, one of the greats that fought in, on Showtime many, many times. And uh, Casimore versus Corrales was a classic, and I'm expecting that kind of uh, a performance. And I think Gervonta is going to bring out the best in Hector, and I know Hector is going to bring out the best in Gervonta. Champ, being back here at home, you, you laid out a lot of the folks that are going to be on the undercard. You started here in D.C. You got this big fight on the 7th of January here in D.C. What does it mean to you to be back home and not be opening things up, but to open opportunities up for other fighters? Uh, I think this, 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 um, this is important. You know what I mean? It's definitely important, you know what I mean, to be able to open up, you know, ways... I mean, well, yeah, ways for other fighters that, you know what I mean, they, the, the, uh showcase their skills. You know what I mean? I think that's very important to be able to come back. And that's what it's for, bro. You know what I mean? Once you, once you, you know what I mean, had that, that, uh, what I want to say, like, you make it, you make your, your stamp, your mark in the, in the sport. It's about coming back and try to, you know what I mean, show other people. You know what I mean? It's, it can happen. So showcase that skills at a, at a high level. You know what I mean? I definitely, uh, I always try to push to have like a lot of up and coming guys that's coming after me or even on the same. Just try to get them on the uh, on the card just so they can showcase their skills. And you know what I mean? It's enough for us all to win. You know what okay. I mean? I feel as though that's that's a major goal for us. To, once we make it out, definitely come back and show other people that it's, it could be done. Okay, all right. Well, Hector, this is for you. you. You heard that all of the focus is just on you. Nobody else. We know that you're going up. He's been talking crazy, too. You're, <laughs> I'm going to ask him about it. I'm going to ask him about it. <laughs> you're taller. You're moving up. We all know about Tank's power. Do you feel that you're going to go into this fight not just have a, a height advantage, but will you have a size advantage, period? Are you ready for the power?
Bueno, eh, yo tengo eh, sí la ventaja de, del tamaño, pero yo me adapto al, al ritmo de, de mi rival. Eh, yo sé que es una tarea, una tarea dura, porque es el tanquecito un hombre. Eh, yo, yo sé que, que el tanquecito es un campeón, pues libra por libra, y porque yo no puedo hacerlo. Uh, well, I do know that I have an advantage because I'm taller, but at the same time, I know that I can also adapt myself to the rhythm of my rivals. And I know that Tank, uh, it, it's a hard opponent, it's going to be a tough rival, uh, but I know that I have what it takes. Okay. Tank, I'm going to let you get the last word in response there before we get to media questions. I also want to ask you, being here in the nation's capital, your profile is large, you're a global superstar, and celebrity. DC, different type of a town. Is there anyone in particular that you would love to see come out to this fight at Capital One Arena? Yeah. Uh, yeah, everybody. Uh, I ain't gonna lie. I, to be back in I mean, uh, DC and uh, fighting Ari, I got them on the card. The people that I wanted to come. And that's Lamont and Anthony. Okay. All right, all right, we're gonna open questions up and take questions from the media. Hey Tank, off to your left. This whole journey, dream come true or well executed game plan? Say it again, I'm sorry, my mom. Your, your journey that you're on right now, dream come true or well executed game plan? I ain't gonna lie, it ain't a dream come true. It's just, it's just me trying to get over that hump. That's it. I don't think that, you know what I mean? I, I'm, not, I'm not there yet, so I feel as though he just, I gotta get over this hump. That's what it is. This is Derek Vaughn from the Chomtastic Mile of Baltimore. How you doing, sir? Um, Tank, we talked about when you had the homecoming about three years ago. I want to know, because I know about you, what is the inner motivation for you for this fight? I'm not talking about money. I'm not talking about what is the inner motivation for Tank Davis to take this fight? No disrespect, but to come get niggas. That's it. That's my motivation. I ain't, I ain't, no, <laughs> I ain't no talking, man. I'm trying to get them. James Weller, well, the boxing source. Actually, this co uh, question is for Coach Calvin. Now, you talked about you know being in there in camp with Tank, and that he has a newfound focus, particularly for this particular camp. Like, what is it in this camp that stands out of what Tank's doing in comparison to anything that he's done in the past? He's awake. He's coming into the man that we've been training for for years. He controlling everything now. He's starting to understand. He's putting on his big boy pants. We understand that this fight is the main fight to the other fights. When I talk to him, I'm not talking to Little Tank anymore. I'm talking to the grown man Tank. For being with him for so many years, it's amazing to see a kid from a man to a grown man. And this fight is everything. The show, stop playing with him. Give him his, give him his props. They still don't want to give him his props, but that's good. We from the mud. We like playing in the mud. The seventh, come and watch this. We putting everybody on notice. Everybody. Tank, you're, hey Tank, Gene Wong from the Washington Post. You've mentioned how much you're looking forward to fighting back in DC, um, a city that has such a rich boxing history. I mean, you're the main, you're the headliner from the, at Capital One for the first time since Mike Tyson. DC's also hosted fights with Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard, Riddick Bo, Lamont Peters you mentioned. What does it mean to you to follow in that line of just some of the all-time great fighters to fight in DC? Uh, <clears throat> it, it just, 
I ain't gonna lie, I just it felt good to be back home. You know what I mean? Just like you said, amongst the greats, uh, just be able to come back home and put on a great performance and put on a great event, things like that. Be able to get everybody together and you know what I mean. Have a great, I, I say party. You know what I mean? Cause that's what it is. You know what I mean? We 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 grind in the gym. A lot of people don't see that. So come uh, them them big events. It's time to show out. You know what I mean? And uh, I think that it's important that you know what I mean when. Like when you be able to come back home and be able to bring everybody together and there's no drama and things like that, I think that's important and that's what we're doing. I mean, so coming back home is definitely, it's a it's a uh, big mark for me. I mean. Hey, Mike here from uh, DC Mike TV. Uh, Calvin, how you doing, Calvin? How you uh, doing, Tank, bro? How you doing? I ain't seen you in a few years. Um, I've been knowing you since you were about 17, 18 years old. Um, you've always been a quiet kind of guy. Um, do you like this role right here, like as far as you getting all this attention plus money, or would you rather just have the money and kind of be below the radar? Yeah, I ain't going to lie. It's, just, it's a lot that come with it. I'd rather get my money and just chill. I mean, but it's a part of the sport. I'm part, uh, part of the sport, so I'm just ready to shut everybody up. You know what I mean? All the talking that's going around that's flirting in the air. I'm ready to pit them. You know what I mean? Shut that ass up. And I got uh, one more. Um, I've been talking to a lot of people about this fight. And, um, you know, most people would say, you know, they would look over Hector. But a couple people do not look over Hector. Why do you, why do you guys think that a lot of people are looking over Hector? Obviously, you know, he's an Olympian. He beat, you know, Chris Colbert, obviously. He's, a, I think, a champion at 130, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, you know why do you think a lot of people are overlooking Hector? I mean, I ain't gonna lie. Uh, nah, but it's two fighters that I think it was yeah this year that or last year that was saying that they was gonna knock somebody out and and it was like a step in a uh, step in opponent and that was Tefimo and and Chris Colbert. You know what I mean? And he wanted them, both of them wanted them getting touched up. So I always knew not to. You know what I mean? When I was coming up. And the uh, pros, and we was signed, we we all signed the uh, Al Heyman. We was fighting, you know what I mean, ducks and things like that. And a lot of guys' prospects was getting clipped because of they was going in there, and, you know what I mean, just throwing and not even thinking like I'm actually in a fight, you know what I mean. So I was always them guys that that stay focused and know that everybody in front of you is a threat, you know what I mean. So. We know that God's here coming, you know what I mean? Not to say I I watch him. I watch him a lot, you know what I mean? I watch all my opponents, you know what I mean? Even down to training. I know what they're doing day in, day out. This, tank's for, uh, this question's for Tank. This is Edward on the ropes boxing. I wanted to talk about... Uh, you put yourself in a situation where you wanted to help the next generation. You talked about that uh, at the press conferences in Baltimore, that you've always wanted to help those that are coming behind you. I wanted to talk about a young man, uh, Jaleel Hackett, who's here from D.C., who's been a part um, of your training camps uh, in the past. Um, first got to meet him at the age of 16 um, in your camp. Um, why was it important for him to be on your card? Uh, we've been knowing Jaleel since he was just yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. So it's definitely important to, you know what I mean, have a guy like him. Cause I was, I'm not too far from him. Like I was, you know what I mean, coming up just like him. You know what I mean, in DC and coming in rooms like this when down there, Adrian and Lamont and Anthony was and all them was, you know what I mean. So I'm just doing what, you know what I mean. I feel as though it's right. I feel as though that's 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 the way to do it. You know what I mean? And he's the next young lion. Just as well, we got Stacy over there. We got Mia. We got a lot of young people that's coming behind me. Demond, uh, uh, just everybody. Just you know what I mean. A lot of guys that's coming behind me, and you know what I mean. I just want to be able to get at get them the platform. I think that's that's right. Hey, Dink. This is Matt Paris from the Washington Times. Uh, Stephen was talking over here. Oh. <laughs> 
Sorry. Uh, Steven was talking about kind of how maybe other fighters would have just skipped this fight and go past it. What do you kind of make of that? Do you think that separates you in this sport that you're willing to take? What you mean skip fight? it? Like, just you could have fought Ryan Garcia instead in April. Like, it, what do you kind of make of that you are willing to accept this challenge uh, right away? Uh, no, nah, it was just because uh, I don't want to say, but it was for different reasons. You know what I mean? It was for different reasons, and we just had to take him. You know what I mean? So. All good. All right. What we're going to do is ask you guys to, to stand up and, and get some photos together. Face off, you meant. <laughs> well, after, let's just start. <laughs> Saturday, January 7th, Capital One Arena, Washington, D.C., the WBA Lightweight World Championship. Gervonta Tank Davis, Hector Luis Garcia, goes down on Showtime pay-per-view Saturday, January 7th, 2023. Sign contract, Thank you so much for watching this video and make sure to subscribe for more videos of your favorite fighters over here on Fight Up TV and give us a follow online as well at Fight Up TV on Twitter and on Instagram. We appreciate it, guys.